Hi, and welcome everyone to the Creative Cast. My name is Lucas Salman, and today um, we have the honor and the delight to have on the show the youngest master qualified European photographer, Martin Kristinek. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> um, so before we start with anything in depth, I would like to get to know you better and I would love to have you share a bit of your uh, background story and who you are. <laughs> it's <laughs> easy story. Uh, yeah. I'm um, Martin Kristinek from Slovakia. I was born in Poprad uh, near High Tatras with, with a great view. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my journey somewhere near 2007-8 when I bought my camera and I uh, tried to shoot some of my friends who, who uh, uh, which were dancing mm -hmm. for the competitions. So <clears throat> this was my start. Okay. And uh, after two years of, of shooting and trying, I, I, uh, I think to myself, I want to uh, move it to next level. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to South America and to make some experiences and practice in shootings. Ooh, okay, so but I was well, that's there. a big move. Yeah. But if you want to change everything, you need to start somewhere. Yeah. So I, yeah. I moved to, to South America, to Paraguay, mm -hmm. where I, uh, I uh, learned everything about the photography because I was shooting almost every day. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, my biggest school and the big challenge for me because I was alone. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak Spanish and I, I needed to find a job because okay. it was cra crazy. But uh, <laughs> I, wa I was uh, from uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. They they like my style because it was other than uh, they have, and they present me like I'm international photographer. Okay. So, so the I start with some models, and they move my contacts to other models, to agencies, to televisions. Mm -hmm. So I start my journey there. Okay. And I was wor working a lot. All right, I that's didn't good. See the ca ca country there. All right, yeah. More work than sightseeing, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and uh, then I moved back to Slovakia when I started my uh, uh, my studio. Mm -hmm. I bought some equipment. Uh, I was learning in some workshops how to light properly, how to edit my photos and everything like this. Yes. Uh, and then I started wor working here. I need some money, so I started with uh, weddings, mm -hmm. and it go it goes pretty well. So I was happy with this job. Okay. And now okay. it's more than twelve years that I'm shooting. Oof, yeah, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, may I ask what, why you chose to go to South America? <clears throat> As it's such a far place to go from uh, starting from Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, I was there uh, before in 2007 and 2008 uh -huh. for like like a tourist. I was mm -hmm. in Brazil, Argentina, uh, Chile, Peru, uh, Uruguay, and Paraguay. Oh so, wow! Almost I, all of them. <laughs> I like the yeah. I, I like the people. Like they live. Like uh, uh, they attitude. Mm -hmm. And how they are uh, super happy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I decided to go there. Oh, sweet. Like the mindset, right? Yeah. It's, it's you know, the very well-known Spanish mindset. Like, you know, relaxed, but still, you know, friendly yeah. and all. Okay, sweet. All right. And, and then how did you um, evolve? Because, you know, nowadays, um, for everyone that checks out your, your work, um, what you pretty much doing is portraits, um, weddings, and you know also very very 
you know, like boudoir, like intimate portraits. Like, how did you like? How did you find that a niche for you? That style for you? Yeah, I always liked uh, work working with people. Mm-hmm. So uh, this was my main uh, target: people. I like portraits. Uh, I like studio portraits when you can set up lights and everything. Mm-hmm. But I also like uh, natural light portraits, like on weddings and uh, on some somewhere outside. Mm-hmm. but uh, I really love uh, black and white photography. Mm-hmm. So I decided to to ma- make my own style and I tried to do uh, black and white portraits only for some uh, months. And I, mm-hmm. I really uh, find my style. And now uh, many people, when they look at my photos, they know that there is my photo uh, also without logo. So yeah, I I find something uh, like my style. Okay, sweet. That's that's pretty difficult to do. Uh, I find it at least to be quite difficult. You know, to um, make consistent photos that are recognizable. Yeah, for example, this uh, collection, Sensual Beauty and the Faces, mm-hmm. uh, I I made it from 2014, so now it's seven years. Right. And I was uh, only searching uh, for good light about half year, so it was very mm-hmm. difficult. Okay. I mean... Um... If, if the history of photography has taught us something is that um, every good photo project takes ages, <laughs> yeah. right? So um, it's kind of like a good wine. If it doesn't rest for several years, it's not good. <laughs> all right, all right, good, good, good to know that. Um, and um, I would like, I'm interested too in, um, first of all, what I have, um, introduced you with um, you are um, as you claim the the youngest um, master qualified European photographer um, would you be so kind to explain us what that actually means yeah uh, this uh, title master qualified European photographer is uh, given by uh, Federation of European Photographers mm-hmm. uh, which has uh, headquarters in Brussels okay. and uh, e- every year they made uh, something like judging mm-hmm. where, where uh, you send your pictures and you have to start with e- EP like European photographer uh, then you can get a qualified European photographer like mm-hmm. QEP and then you can get master but uh, uh, to get master, to be very skilled, mm-hmm. and your collection have to be uh, consistent, mm-hmm. like you told. And only eighty people in the world has this title, I think. Oh wow! Okay. And I'm the youngest one. Okay, straight enough. And yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. And the journey uh, to get it was also very hard because uh, to choose. Uh, for master, you need to choose 20 best pictures mm-hmm. and made a collection to, to print it on a perfect paper. Mm-hmm. No shit. You have to have <laughs> a feeling that this is some, yeah, yeah. something luxurious. Yes, yes. <laughs> some some fine art paper. And, uh, and uh, I was trying first time in 2018, I think, mm-hmm. in Finland. And uh, I didn't didn't pass because I have some mistakes there. Okay. Uh, but I, I was contacting the judging after half year mm-hmm. uh, and asking what was wrong, uh, why I didn't pass, and they they sure. explained me where I made mistakes, what was wrong, and mm-hmm. this is this was the best school because I learned from my mistakes mm-hmm. and I learned how to how to do it better, and now. I am really focused on what's important on the pictures and um, how, 
how I made it now. Okay, great. What are those um, so-called mistakes you did um, that you needed to fix? Next time in 2000. Uh, one time, please. Wait, wait a second. The connection is a little bit bad Because right it, now. Yeah. Yeah. But now I hear you perfectly. Yes. Now it's better. All right, go ahead. Uh, I don't understand the question because oh, the yeah. connection was very bad. Um, I was asking what those mistakes were that you did on your first try that needed fixing. What was the mistakes? Or where was the mistake? Are you asking? Yes, what the mistakes were. Uh, it's difficult to explain like this, but um, there was some uh, problem with uh, choosing photos. Not mm -hmm. all pictures was consistent. Mm -hmm. Some pictures doesn't fit the whole panel. Mm -hmm. uh, on some pictures was a problem with retouching. Okay. But we, it was, it was, it were you know, some mistakes that can be repaired very easily. So, so, so I learned from that and I, I made the new pictures and mm. changed some pictures from the panel and the main, the new panel. But when we can see the pictures, I can explain what was wrong, what was good. So, sure. All right. So out of, out of nothing, it's a bit difficult. I understand. Yeah. Um, okay. So, well, it's, yeah, it's a typical thing. So maybe like the, um, the quality of the, the, the retouching, you know, uh, isn't, isn't as good as it maybe could be, but also, and I find that oftentimes even more difficult and it's about choosing the right images, you know, for uh, a, cer a certain uh, series. Not only that, but also yeah. the, the order is also very important. Did they consider that as yeah. well? Yeah. The, the order of the picture is also very important. Uh, for example, not on my pictures, but when you, when, you, uh, can shoot, when you want to apply with, for example, a, a reportage, you need to tell a story with these pictures. Mm. You can cannot uh, choose randomly and uh, put it on a panel. Yeah. You have to choose wisely and start from beginning and end with the end. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. So it makes sense, right? If, it, if yeah. the order is wrong, maybe they, they can't follow the, the story, right? Well, it's not as strong as it could be. All right. Um, who would you say is that because it's a title right and who, who would you say that title is for should everyone try to get that or should you have certain uh you know goals in order to do it so that it makes sense you know who is that supposed to be for the title yeah uh first of all you have to be a member of uh your association in your country for example okay. in germany and uh, when you want to apply to to this title you have to be a member of your on the of the national uh, association okay the second uh, you have to be skilled and mm -hmm. uh, who is the title for uh, for example for me the title help helps me a lot also with the clients uh, Mm -hmm. and uh, the best thing that I learned from, from my mistakes. So this mm -hmm. title learned me a lot and uh, learned me also how to work, how to, how to look at my pictures, more mm -hmm. critique, because, mm -hmm. you know, you, sometimes you, you can shoot some shit, put it on the internet and you get million likes because you have nice colors. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, totally. <laughs> But when you look at at your pictures, you cannot judge yourself correctly. So I learned it from uh, from from this uh, judging. Okay, how did you learn that? Because it's so hard to be 
um, objective with your own work. Yeah. Uh, I have to come back to the past because uh, we skip my, I don't know, ideas of, of life. True, true. Shooting. So uh, when I was here in Slovakia, I, I was trying to apply to association of professional photographers in Slovakia mm -hmm. and I, I was waiting one year to to get the access to this uh, association oh wow and I had some friends who were there and mm -hmm. they they also helped me to check my photos to to prepare the panel mm -hmm. so I was kind of learning uh, what can I do better mm -hmm. And then uh, after I, I was in association, I tried to, to be more active. I go to meetings. I learned from other older photographers. I, I get some experiences and practice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it was also very good school for me. Yeah. And uh, after I was uh, very active, I became... Uh, president of association so <laughs> yeah okay also very, act <laughs> very active <laughs> yeah but i was very active and uh, i was very involved to to do something for photographers in slovakia mm -hmm. so i i always trying to help them to change change the scene here mm -hmm. and uh, i think We are uh, good in uh, photography. We have many awarded photographers in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very happy that I can help them too with these panels and pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was the president, when I was, when they voted me for president of association, mm -hmm. I started uh, to be more, Are active also in Federation of European Photographers because we meet three times a year when, um, when the situation is in normal, not like this. Yeah. And also, uh, I became a judge for, for FEP mm -hmm. and for many uh, international competitions. Okay, great. So you have to, to work and that to go through many, many pictures. Mm -hmm. And this is also very, very good school because you mm -hmm. learn uh, how other people in other countries, in other continents think mm -hmm. and what they send to competition. Mm -hmm. And also <clears throat> you can learn how the judges work, what they like, why they like it, because it's difficult when, for example, uh, somebody enter with wedding from Malaysia or China mm -hmm. and they have huge weddings yeah and uh, they they always won because they have like fashion <laughs> weddings yeah true <laughs> for example he, here are some like documentary weddings not so not not so nice mm -hmm. but weddings are perfect but but when you are competing with a Malaysian photographer or Spain or Italian, you have no chance. <laughs> so, so you you have to think like a judge because what what the judge will like you you have to see the pictures before years and years ago. And mm -hmm. this is this was also very good for me because when I judge every year, maybe five six competitions, mm -hmm. and they are different styles. So. You always see different pictures, and sometimes there are tons of pictures. Yeah, I have to go through. So you have to go through. Oh my god! But um, as you said, it's it's a, it's a great school for you. You learn yeah. so much by you know being part of that and having so much visual content go go past you. Um, that's actually something I. I was curious about as well as you're the first, the first person I have on the show that had the, you know, that also works as a creator sometimes in for expositions, but also as a judge for competitions like that. And um, I'll be, 
uh, I would love to hear, you know, your your thought about that, about your experience so far as as a judge. How, how you know how your role plays out, but what is actually what you do, you know, and how do you proceed to choose one set of images or one single image over another one? What's yeah, your process? It's very, it's very hard. And also when you have uh, more judges, mm -hmm. for example, uh, like we was doing uh, two years ago in Oslo, in Norway, mm -hmm. I, we, was, we were judging uh, in person. So we were sitting, five judges and one uh, head judge. Mm -hmm. Everything was recorded on cameras. Oh. So uh, it was about three days of judging from morning till evening. And mm -hmm. you go through the pictures and sometimes uh, you have judge. For example, I was in, from Slovakia. Other judge next to me was uh, Andy from Germany. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know him. Andy Ooh. Hens. Andy Hens from Germany. Andy Hens. He lives, he lives somewhere near you. He's also yeah. a master and... Oh, he okay. No, not yet. <laughs> perfect CGI's. So he's very good photographer. Mm -hmm. And th there was also uh, women from Norway. Uh, one woman was from Sweden. One from Finland. And mm -hmm. uh, one judge was from uh, Belgium. Okay. And you you know. Uh, I, I have my own style. I like some kind of pictures. Mm -hmm. And he has other style, like other pictures. Mm -hmm. And on this judging, when you are in person, you go through the pictures and then there is a simple picture. Mm -hmm. For example, I say, no, this is not good. <laughs> okay. And they say, ho, 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 this is perfect. Yeah. And then start the debate. And, and when you are... Uh, listening what the judges say, mm -hmm. they they can explain why it is good, and I say, ah, yes, you you have right because it's the light, the ev everything. So uh, when mm -hmm. you listen to other judges and very skilled judges, you can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And then uh, next time when you are judging online, like for example, I judge uh, this year the Bundes photographer from Germany. Mm -hmm. And we, due to COVID, uh, we judged online. Mm. For me, it was more easy when I learned from past years. And I can explain why I like this or why I don't like this. Mm. Okay. But how do you, how do you differentiate your, your own personal preferences, right? And likes yeah. from an objective, uh, this one's better than this one. Right. Yeah. Uh, when I'm judging internationally, I I don't uh, use my objective preferences. I I just want to uh, find the best pictures, like uh, pictures which has very good impact. That you are scrolling through the pictures, and now you stop and say, "Oh wow, this is perfect." Mm. And then then you have to think about it. And uh, pictures like this always won when you so some uh, award yes. from some international competitions mm -hmm. you can see that always the the wow pictures won yeah. you don't have a, a, a shit uh, in fact I know yeah. like this because scroll through three or five thousand pictures you have to find uh, pictures with best impact Yes. They are very interesting, not not uh, usual, because mm -hmm. <clears throat> sometimes photographers don't think uh, about it, and they put ordinary pictures to the competitions. Mm -hmm. For example, when I'm curating on the page one x dot com, you maybe you saw saw it. We have statistics, and um, every every week I go through two thousand pictures. Mm -hmm. And maybe one or two percent are good enough to, to pass to the next round. Okay. And it's two thousand every week. It's not <laughs> small. It's too too big. 
and it's there are too yeah, many the... similar similar pictures, mm-hmm. and you are bored because when you have I don't know bridges, and you see the, the same bridge all the time, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and we we called it like uh, uh, that that place because it's the place where all the photographers go and where all the photographers shoot. And mm-hmm. we, there are many places like in Iceland, uh, in Norway, Lof- Lofoti, uh, Lofoten, yeah. uh, the same. Uh, I don't know what this is in Germany or maybe in uh, in uh, Italy, Tuscany. The same pictures all the time. Mm-hmm. And they all look very <laughs> similar. Think different. Yeah. So you have to think very... Uh, very different if you want to to win something okay i agree um maybe you could um explain how what what an image uh what makes an image stand out what are the key aspects you know that a great image has to have Uh, for example, on my pictures, when I uh, learned some years ago, uh, I see that if I uh, upload pictures like uh, I do now with the mm-hmm. details of the faces, yeah. where the picture is full of everything, uh, it has more impact than the picture in the studio where there is standing some model and around it is black or uh, white background. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have so much impact like when you put the detail like this on the mm-hmm. frame. Mm-hmm. And then you can focus on uh, on the subject. For example, eyes or, or skin or all the whole face or mm-hmm. the hair. I don't know. But you you have to think about it and you have to put your subject in the in the frame and yeah. not uh, too much uh, distortion or or distraction or mess around distraction yeah okay okay yes you you want to keep it simple and you want to make it easy for the viewer to what they should pay attention to maybe Yeah, because uh, the viewers also on Instagram or everywhere on on web they go and scroll or yeah. like this, yeah. and you you have to fill the this frame with something imp- important that mm-hmm. they people will stop and say, oh wow, this is okay or perfect. Yes, it worked. It worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Like I actually got um, or you came to my attention through a post of Leica, I think it was Leica, on um, uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. And they posted some of your images or some of your uh, faces um, photos. And there were, I think there were the colored ones and the, where there was all this detail on the skin. And I saw that, I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, slightly jealous i was like oh shit okay <laughs> and then um i got curious and I, i even asked you like is this like how is this retouch and this is i think another great topic um that um you know you care a lot about which is um retouching um the image versus leaving is leaving it as it is pretty much and um, I would love to hear your point on that and how how's that, has that evolved over time? Uh, many people are asking me about my retouching uh, mm-hmm. because they saw these detailed photos from Leica or my Pentax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I'm not retouching. I'm too lazy. <laughs> so I'm leaving it like it is. I only do some very simple retouching, about five minutes in Photoshop, not more so... Uh, maybe that's why these pictures are so interesting because many people uh, was retouching and mm-hmm. try and new techniques and sometimes mm-hmm. you don't know if it's picture or it's a computer generated image or what is it yes and uh, sometimes you don't see the skin of the girl and I say mm-hmm. why 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks so glossy and plasticky. So, so uh, now I'm you know? trying. Yeah. So now, now I'm trying not to retouch. Oh, uh, and I like it more like it, it was re- retouched. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. But um, I mean, going through your work yeah. on your website, there are images that have um retouched skin, like, or at least it looked like it. So yeah, because um, it's very old page. <laughs> okay, okay. So in the beginning, not you that. did you did use it. You did do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think every photographer will came through the same levels or skills. So yeah. first, you you want to try pictures outside in the field with girl mm. and the sunset, <laughs> all this <laughs> kitsch. <laughs> and uh, th- then you try to do some pictures in studio and try to retouch as heavy as possible. Yeah. And uh, when you find your style, you you will learn and you will not retouch and not going to feel mm. and it's better when when you came through all this and uh, after i don't know five six maybe eight years you you can find your, your own style mm. yes it takes so time. you tell me i need to upgrade my uh, my upgrade my website <laughs> yeah yeah you do <laughs> because there are not many pictures and they're, they're very very old pictures yes okay i see well, i don't I mean... have time i always say uh, the people yes and i'm always saying when people have a uh, nice uh, websites they have mm-hmm. nothing to do <laughs> and sure. i have no time to do my website so i'm only putting my uh, pictures on instagram and no- mm. nothing else yeah but I totally understand that. Like um, having a website is also like it's it's a never-ending place to work at. You know, it, it never there's yeah. always something you can do about it, update and do this and change the design and what and whatnot. You know, so it's totally understandable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but, have time for this. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Good for you. Um, I guess because you know you're busy doing no important things, but. Um, what I also um, found out is um, that you're actually building, or you have sort of like a team, right? With your wife and with two, um, I think, developers. At least, you know, that's how it looks like. In the, in, in the, in the section of About Us, you know, there's you and there, I think it's your wife, which is a makeup artist. Um, and yeah. two guys are developers. So how, how did you like, do you all somehow, you know, build a brand together and work together or how does that work? Yeah. Uh, we, we share the same uh, place in the building. So mm-hmm. in my studio, there is also this uh, guy who is developing and making websites, applications, which has also never time for my website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the the second guy is the uh, graphic designer, which also don't have time for my website and doing his own stuff. Oh. And um, next to me is uh, my wife, which has own studio uh, mm-hmm. and doing makeups, uh, cosmetics, and uh, mm-hmm. all these mm-hmm. uh, beauty things. Yeah, and this is this, she is my Photoshop. So when <laughs> she, yeah. He's doing perfect makeup. I don't need to retouch anything. Mm-hmm. Great. I mean, it, that is such a powerful uh, partner to have because, spe- well, especially for portrait photographer that normally, um, you know, does need someone to do the makeup, you know, and whether it's for man or for woman. So that, that's, that's great that you, you guys can actually work together. So... Props yeah. to you for this that. is very big help and also uh, during the, f- the shooting it's very helpful because uh, she has other uh, photographic eye mm-hmm. she has other um, how to say uh, her own feelings mm-hmm. so she maybe can help with the model to 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 make posing better. Oh, yeah. To see, ah, here is the hair. I need to fix this. 
Okay, because nice. I don't think about this on the shooting. I, yeah. I focus on my light and focus mm -hmm. uh, on shooting, not uh, about the hairs and makeup and yeah. so. Yeah, that would be too much. But yeah, I get you. Like she has her own taste and also pays attention yeah. to details. You know that may be yeah. missed by the photographer. That's that's great. Um, I just I just had to think about this one. Um, this one image I've seen as well is about this guy and he's like smoking and they're like, um, he's like sitting and there are like mountains in the back, black and white. Yeah. Really, really enjoyed that one. Uh, I would love to hear the story behind that. Yeah, and it's eight years old picture. <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, Th this was in my uh, early beginnings in Slovakia. So mm -hmm. uh, this uh, guy, the model, was mm -hmm. uh, asking for pictures for uh, his agency. Mm -hmm. And he came and he has uh, so messy uh, long hair. Yeah. And I say... My wife say, "Oh yes, he will be perfect." So he made this. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> hairs. He, she made some uh, makeup, and uh, we have studio in this big building. Uh, mm -hmm. So I said, "Oh wow, we can come uh, on the roof, and we can make pictures because the background with the mountain was perfect." Mm -hmm. Oh okay. And, so uh, it was uh, with contrast with his suit. Yeah. Because he was uh, suited, like, uh, I don't know, for gala, but he was sitting on the ground and smoking. What a, what, a, what a guy. And also, like, the detail of that image is so spot on. Like, it obviously has some, um, I would say, noise. Maybe it's grain. Um, what did you shoot yeah. that with? It was with Canon 5D Mark II, I think. Okay, so it, it is noise, but... Um, that's, that's... But it is my, my own noise uh, because the picture yeah, okay. was clear. But uh, this noise I'm using about 10 years. It's the same noise I am using all the time on all pictures. <laughs> okay, it's always the same. It's no, like but... a signature. Yeah, okay. But no, but it, it adds to the to the image. It doesn't, it doesn't, at least I feel like it doesn't, it doesn't take away from it. Um but um, you must have used what 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 lens did you use? Do you remember? Uh, it was seventy two hundred. Oh, okay, still all right. I feel like it was maybe more. So you had to be pretty far out. Um, all right, no, but good, good, good for you for that. No, but um, so getting um, getting back to you know you and working as a judge and. As a creator, so we have, we have talked now a bit about uh, your work as a judge. You know how it works, um, how much work it is, and how difficult sometimes the decision can be, um, and also the different criteria you might be looking for. Um, maybe before we finish with that part, I'll love you to maybe try give some advice um, to you know future people or like candidates right for for those kind of competitions what they should be looking for how they can improve the work that submit yeah uh how they can improve uh i advised uh that they should shouldn't be scary scared and mm -hmm. they can ask uh their favorite photographers uh for advice for example like uh, also helping some people for these competitions and they wrote me oh i got pictures like this can i enter with this and i say mm. you know this is the the similar pictures i see seeing every week so you should try to find something special and mm -hmm. they can send me their portfolio and i can do some reviews and recommend some some uh, uh, reparation or some other pictures which are better and mm -hmm. they they also can learn from this and they can find their uh, best shots and they buy with this and I think uh, and I see also that this is very helpful and the uh, people won the competition with 
after after they ask some somebody who is better. Okay. Because you cannot judge yourself because you don't know how the judges think and how mm. they work. Yeah. So it was also very difficult for me when I started to enter competition because I never won uh, nothing. Mm-hmm. I was trying and I was sending pictures and paying so much money and nothing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. after some years of uh, unsuccess- unsuccessful entries, I asked my friend, what's wrong? Why th- this picture, which I think is perfect, didn't uh, go through the judges? And he yeah. s- said me, oh, this is not a good picture. <laughs> no, straight <laughs> off. shit. So, yeah. Yeah, but uh, he helped me with, uh, to to find better pictures and to think uh, other way uh, about it. Mm-hmm. And then I started to won competitions. And actually, I have around 420 international awards. So this is the result. <laughs> okay, so uh, the results speak for themselves. So right? the ad- 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 Advice is not be scared and ask ask somebody else to help because mm-hmm. you cannot oh, you don't know how it works. Yeah, yeah. But you 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 go to your friend back then with this one image and you say it's perfect and he says it's not. What didn't you see? What did what didn't you manage to see back then in that image? What was not working? Yeah, because <clears throat> because I I I. Uh, made this image uh, I had my own feelings with it uh, uh-huh. it takes long time to prepare to go to to shoot to retouch and uh, you know you have your own feelings and you, mm-hmm. you think you do the best you can and uh, the shooting was fun and the pictures was nice mm-hmm. but uh, the judge that doesn't see how much you work on it and he only see the result Yeah. And uh, when the result don't say nothing, it's, it's not so great, like you think. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, all the people don't have all that emotional, you know, luggage with them that goes with, yeah. with all the work that is behind that image, right? So they yeah. are more, more clear, yeah. more honest. Yeah. That's why many photographers think that they are best. Okay. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Because they don't, they don't fact check it. They just, I, you know, live in their bubble in a way. Yeah. Okay. So, so your your main your main advice would be be self critical and get other people on board and have listen to their opinion on your work. Basically, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to explain that. For example, we we have the association for this, so you can enter the association or ask for advice mm-hmm. of uh, professionals. I think when when uh, you ask normal people, for example, mm-hmm. like me, I have no problem, and I always answer everybody who asking because mm-hmm. why not? I I love to share my experience. Okay. I know that some kind of photographers are oh, don't ask me nothing. I don't have time, but it's bullshit. You always have time for answer. True, true. And then I appreciate it. It's 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 that kind of attitude you have that uh, makes you in here with me right now, really. <laughs> right? Being open yeah. for new people and 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 their suggestions. Um so as well it says that you're a curator. For expositions, tell me more about that. I don't like. I don't know um, any like. I don't know anything about that uh, regarding you. So, um, what kind of exposition have you have you created? Yeah, it's uh, it's online exposition only because we don't have many expositions like this here in Slovakia. But it's the similar like uh, judging. So. Uh, You have uh, many sites when you can upload your pictures. Mm-hmm. Some of the sites are 
uh, only like storage. So you upload and they publish everything because you pay some, I don't know, mm. a membership or something, or maybe mm. you it's, it's free. Mm-hmm. But then you have sites where you upload pictures and um, they they are sitting curators like me and they are uh, judging the pictures. They mm-hmm. see, okay, this is good, this is not good and uh, it's going through some uh, rounds. Like the first, first round, it's sitting like some eight curators which has... 10,000 pictures per week and they see that this is like from mobile this is not good Mm -hmm. and they are selecting and uh, after that we are selecting from the best pictures Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also maybe five person goes through the final to to be published in the gallery okay okay Okay, nice Um, is there any occasion that sticks out to you you know, for some reason. Uh, occasion about what? Um, any, you know, uh, is, did, did you have any um, experience with, you know, creating, but even, even judging where um, that's, that sticks out to you for some reason where you had to make a difficult decision or maybe it was, you know, a lot of fun for some reason. Yeah, it's sometimes it's very difficult to judge because uh, you you say no and the pictures mm-hmm. didn't go through. Yeah, and uh, then photographer wrote an emails why you do this. This is really? best picture. Yeah, and oh. people uh, cannot judge themselves, so they think this is best, <laughs> and you yeah. you reject it. So mm-hmm. it's very difficult. Okay. But so they, sometimes uh, yeah. you you also have to be uh, skilled in judging or mm-hmm. to be like uh, you have to know the other competitions that you see picture and, and you, you think, ah, I saw it in some competition. It was mm-hmm. on first place. It's perfect picture. So you have to send it uh, to the final okay okay mm. because it, so you have to to be like uh, that that you have eyes everywhere yeah yeah okay uh has it happened before that you maybe have disagreed with all the judges as well that you find an image very good and they didn't think so um and they had to make a decision made yeah, we, we are uh, more curators at the same time. So uh, we are also uh, talking. I say mm-hmm. yes, some, some say no. And yes. then we explain why, mm-hmm. why it's like this, why it's okay for you. And uh, it's about taste. But uh, mm-hmm. then if there is no uh, decision, we ask the head curator, Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe the owner of the site and ask is it okay to publish or not mm. and we explain why so so we it's only like a recommendation final okay. decision have to be on the owner then ah, okay and he makes like the final because, decision. yeah if if we don't uh, find the decision he will mm-hmm. like judge between us Mm-hmm. Okay, but it's okay. very uh, rarely not 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 so many times. So, okay, um, um, yeah, okay. Well, I reckon right. Normally, you you sort of agree, but it gotta happen, right? That you that yeah. you disagree and, and some and and very uh, uh very uh, pic- uh, or many pictures mm-hmm. are the same like for example from india or china where mm-hmm. they made uh, huge workshops they they had the same model and they are about 2000 uh, photographers so so mm-hmm. you see in for example in one month 500 pictures the same yeah. so you know that this workshop and you you have to be careful because uh, I saw in many competitions and everywhere that uh, 
pictures from workshop won a competition and it's not good because mm. it's not your style it's not your photo it's photo of a lector and this mm. is very bad oh okay that's that's another thing to keep in mind if you happen to participate in the workshop you know to not take it too literally or don't do the same thing as everyone else that pass participated right still try to make your own thing out of what you learn right If you apply with picture from workshop, you have to go to prison. <laughs> it's like it's like stealing. Straight to jail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to the photo jail. Um, do you have a favorite a favorite um, competition, photo competition? You are, you have been part of favorite competition. I'm uploading to maybe 10 or 15 years. I didn't uh, compete because I was judge, mm -hmm. but uh, I missed this opportunity because now you can compare uh, your pictures with other professionals mm. and uh, there are competitions where I never won because mm -hmm. they have other style that I'm working, so I'm trying, and I, mm -hmm. I'm very happy when can I see the winners because mm -hmm. uh, you see what's going on in the world, yeah. what will be like uh, for next season, mm -hmm. what will be the style, and and you see every year how it's changed. For example, as, uh, There are competitions where only documentary pictures can won the photographer of the year mm -hmm. because of the big events like, I don't know, war, hurricanes, and mm -hmm. uh, something like this. But uh, other competitions are like uh, when a portrait can won a CGI or big illustrated image. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you think, it's this really about the photos? <laughs> Because yeah, but really, can like CGI and illustrations, but then it's not like a completely like only photo competition. Then it's like mix, right? Yeah. All right, all right. But um, like let's say um, you know, there's someone very young, young photographer that wants to start out and apply to competitions because why do we do that? Uh, first of all, to improve us photographers, right? To improve our work, but also to get recognition for, um, you know, our proficiency, right? So those, those are the two main reasons I reckon most people take part in them. Um, well, which competitions would you recommend people apply to um, when they start out? Regional, but also, also internationally. Yeah, I always uh, recommend only international competitions because uh, regionally competitions are fake and <clears throat> many times corrupted. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, example, I didn't know that. Because, yeah, because you cannot judge your own photographers. Like, for example, when I try to make competition in Slovakia, mm -hmm. Uh, nobody from Slovakia can judge it. It's normal. But uh, this is the problem that, for example, you made Slovak press photo, Czech press photo, mm -hmm. and they judge their own images. What is this? <laughs> this is oh, okay. Insane. For example, yeah. when I judge uh, in Norway, there were no photographer from Norway so you have no mm. chance to know the photographers and pictures mm. or uh, this year I was also uh, judging uh, Finnish photographers mm -hmm. and uh, German photographers and I have no idea who make these pictures yeah. it's better when you uh, invite international photographers from other countries okay okay good point right there um How about you throw out some 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 names of some competitions that you recommend people, um, you know, participate in? Yeah, for example, I like uh, international photo awards uh, mm -hmm. like IPA. Yeah, and they have uh, they, they their own uh, competitions like uh, Tokyo photo awards, Moscow photo awards, mm -hmm. uh, Paris. 
Grand Prix, uh, I like uh, Black and White Spider Awards, Color Award because these competitions are very old and mm-hmm. they have uh, maybe 15 years and they they have good reputation. Mm. Okay. So uh, it's better to apply to the competition which has some history. Mm. Okay, yes, because it speaks for, well, it makes them more uh, re- reputable as well. Right? It, makes, it makes the prize so much more valuable yeah, as not, well. No, so try to, who are the judges? If they are uh, well known and uh, from all the world, it's very good competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they are local, maybe it's not so good. <laughs> okay. As you as you have to say, like if you're not in a, in a national or local competition, and the judges are from there, it might not be as good. It's something to to keep an eye out for. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, for example, two years ago, it's happened many times to me that yeah. I apply uh, in uh, some competitions and then some judges wrote me, uh, did you apply in this competition? Because I think I saw your pictures there. <laughs> I say, yes, why? Well, you, this competition, you have to be judged there, not, not a competitor. Oh. <laughs> so then oh. I... S- Stop, stop this because my own style was very unique and uh, they know it so okay. I, I stop it god damn it well, that's, a, that's such a rare thing to happen to you <laughs> that they actually yeah. you know you apply it so much or you get well known enough uh, because you are a judge so many times as well that they get to know you and then you can't really take part of them anymore yeah oh shit <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, interesting. <laughs> Professionals' problems, I guess. <coughs> um, all right. So, so now they ask me to judge, not to to enter. <laughs> okay, which is what well, would you? But like, if you would have to choose, would like would you still do the judging now rather than the taking part of it? Uh. Judging is better school for me and you earn money, of course, so it's better. But um, when you have more awards, uh, the clients see it. So uh, you can ask more money from clients when you are more awarded. All right. So both. <laughs> both yeah. are good. Okay. <laughs> you, you, can, you can choose. Um, may I? Okay. So... Um, Something I wanted to touch on as well is your your cho- your, your your choice on equipment you use um, nowadays for your work, and why why do you happen to choose uh, a Pentax or why do you use um, a, a, you know a Canon 5D Mark II <laughs> or why do you use a Leica you know? Yeah, nowadays I'm only using um, this Leica Q2. Mm-hmm. because of the result and you saw the result yeah so it's nothing about to tell more about it okay okay what kind of sensor that because like, does that camera have full frame full frame okay yeah 47 megapixel oh okay that's why <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i was also using uh Pentax because it's medium format and was mm-hmm. uh, in this time was uh, uh, I think the cheapest medium format on the market. Mm-hmm. But, but digital or, or film? Uh, digital, yes. Digital. digital. Uh, and it costs about 10,000. Yeah, fuck me. And now, but now you can buy Fuji for 5,000, five, uh, so it's not so problem. But uh, this time was very hard <laughs> because it was only Pentax, Hasselblad, and maybe Phase One. Yeah, and it was super expensive. And also, mm-hmm. like Leica has, uh, but it starts somewhere near eighteen thousand for body. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It still is. It still is super, super expensive. Do you really? Do you really need? Um, 
you know, that much more than, let's say, a full frame with, you know, almost 50 megapixels. Like, do, do you really, um, I, I like, what gives you, what reason do you have to go for a medium format digital camera? Uh, if you if you try sometimes, <laughs> you will know because uh, the this uh, this medium format gives you the feeling like the old photos. Yeah, the, okay. it's very different, like uh, full mm -hmm. frame. Yeah. Also, dynamic range is uh, excellent, mm -hmm. and uh, you you have like. Uh, You, you are touching like a car. <laughs> True, you know? it's, a huge, it's a huge thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have 20,000 in your hands. And, and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair point, fair point. Um, I had, the, I had the, the, the luck or the chance to use uh, Phase One a few years ago. I did the, uh, I did the certificate with them, you know, the, the membership for um you know for um capture one yeah. um and we 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 had the the chance to use them and it was crazy like they have this modular um system where we have the backs and the lenses and the body and uh, all the top part for the view, the viewfinder and it's like all these different parts that come together It's like a like a transformer. You can interchange all these parts. Uh, it was really fun. And really, once you actually get into um, or you start learning about medium format digital cameras, you realize how little you know about photography. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like there is so much, um, so much knowledge there. So much. Um, technical words that you never heard before that you yeah. don't usually get, you know, when you shoot with the full frame camera. Um, and there, there is like an endless ocean of knowledge, um, not only with the camera, but also with the software and things you can, you know, improve upon and after editing and all of that. So um, it's quite intense. I'm not sure how it is with Hasselblad or, uh, you know, With Pentax, I'm not even sure if Leica has. I think Leica, Leica doesn't have uh, medium format cameras, right? I think yes, it, does. it has. Really? Leica has three now. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Are they? Yeah, oh. but it costs twenty thousand. Okay, you didn't have the chance to use that one, probably, right? No, I okay. wanted to try, but uh, in Slovakia, I have no chance to try this. No. Okay, you have to go to like what, like England or Germany or something. Yeah. All right, all right. I, or, or like to I Japan. To go <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So, um, but you you're currently using mainly your your Leica to do your your portrait shots. Yeah. All right. Um, you're mainly doing that as well. Like you're doing still, um, more studio than outdoor, right? Yeah, I'm doing in studio these portraits and nudes, and um, mm -hmm. for weddings I'm using it outside. So like a reportage and for mm -hmm. portraits. Um, um, would you mind to share with us a bit of your um, move on workshops you actually uh, do, and what what is kind of like, how did you start? You know, organizing those workshops, and what what is it? What do you teach in them? Uh, I didn't start. Uh, always somebody asked me to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because I I have no feeling I can learn somebody something, <laughs> but uh, people think that I can start with these workshops. So mm -hmm. I will have uh, two workshops in Germany uh, in January mm -hmm. or February, yet. and it was about presentation of my uh, sensual beauty collection and uh, this faces collection mm -hmm. and uh, with some explanation and uh, showing how I shoot this with the model, how mm -hmm. I uh, communicate with model and maybe some uh, retouching, if I can say about retouching something. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, because you you're very minimal about that. What do you do when yeah. you retouch? Like you do like lighting, and that's about it, or yeah, like... I'm uh, only doing something like uh, maybe some liquify and uh, mm -hmm. very small uh, retouching on the skin, not so much. Okay, okay. So okay, just to get like. A little, little, little bit of a filter in there. All right. Okay. Good. Um, so I'm getting, um, okay. And maybe another, like I always try to get as much value, right. As I can, as much as, uh, as much advice as possible from all this experience, you know, my guests have, uh, and pass it to all the younger generation, you know, that listens to this. And to, um, you know, that are trying the best to become, um, photographers and they make a living out of this, right. Which is so, so difficult nowadays. Um, so how about you, you share with us, you know, very, very selected tips to actually manage to grow as a photographer and actually, you know, make money out of it as well, which is such a big topic. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know how to advise something uh, for the young photographers, how to start and not to die of hunger. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can it's base it off of your, your experience. Mm, I was, I was working sometimes 15 hours a day so mm. it was very hard maybe my, my wife can tell you more about this because she she was uh seeing me only on pictures maybe oh okay fair But, enough, fair uh, enough. I, i i was working very hard to to be like mm. can i say famous or something like this yeah and to get more clients because okay. nowadays You have so many photographers mm -hmm. and uh, I think many of them have the, has the same style. Mm -hmm. So you have nothing new. So you have to think different and to bring something new for the people. Mm -hmm. And it uh, will not always uh, bring you money. Yeah. You will go many years uh, Minus, minus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make deficit. Right? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm thinking like also, yeah, five, maybe four or five years making debt. So it was not so easy. Okay. And I, uh, I, I was trying so hard. So, okay. Now it's okay. Uh, in a sense of you were investing. Oh, you were like lending money to, in order to get like equipment and everything. And in that sense, or. Yeah. Uh, always when I uh, uh, earn some money, I every time uh, invest to the, the technique mm -hmm. because uh, the technique uh, was very important to me and also to, to learn something. Mm -hmm. and also to get to go for competitions because okay. it was big school yeah i i I'm, re i'm realizing how from the very beginning you saw the value and the potential in the, in the world of competitions right not only participating but also later on um, working for them as judges how did you see that value so early on did you like did someone tell you hey you should do this Or, uh, no, uh, I, I was only trying to participate and I was, uh, looking of, uh, the winning images. Every time I, I go through all the images who won every category per category mm -hmm. and I make something like notes and I, I saw what people like or what judges like. And then yeah. I tr tried to bring you next time mm -hmm. yeah okay okay i see you. 
Um, good. Um, so far, uh, I feel like we have spoken about the the main topics I want to 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 attack. You know, in this episode, um, one last thing that I have on my on my mind is um, what this podcast is all about that sometimes somehow forget to mention and it's um this very important quality we all have which is creativity and i would love to hear your take on what creativity means to you and how does it impact your work yeah it's very hard about creativity sometimes because uh First, you need to think about uh, how you earn money and then you don't have time for creativity. So Mm. uh, it's every time about compromises. And uh, when you have, uh, I think, other job and your photography is like a hobby, Mm. maybe then you can think about creativity. But when you are a full-time photographer, Mm-hmm. You have no time for creativity and it's sometimes very frustrating because you have to think how to earn money and uh, how to not to die from hunger yeah, and not, not become homeless. Uh, but sometimes y- you, you see something somewhere uh, and uh, you, you can have some ideas. For example, uh, I I found my creativity uh, when I was uh, competing in a, a competition uh, photography and uh, when going to exhibitions and uh, uh, learn books, for example, uh, of your favorite photographers. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can find best creativity maybe in history because when you when you look like uh, the old photographers did 100 years ago mm-hmm. you you will not believe because the camera was super expensive and they they was doing such a beautiful pictures mm-hmm. like uh, we never will do the same okay and you get inspired from that <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For example, uh, when I want to uh, be inspired, I, I, I have books like uh, Helmut Newton, mm-hmm. Peter Lindbergh, uh, and all these kind of photographers I liked uh, so many years. Mm-hmm. So I I drink a wine and uh, read a book or watch these pictures and mm-hmm. think how they made this with their equipment. <laughs> yeah right because now we every time we complicate everything Mm. and i always think why i should complicate this when it's so easy to do Mm. like they did 50 years ago yeah okay Ah, that's a good point like sometimes like something i like to say which i need to remind myself constantly of uh, in order for me to believe in it, is that the best equipment you you um, the the equipment you you need is the one you have. Yes, right. Always the best best camera is the one you have with you. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and what that says is well, it's it's pretty much the idea you just pointed out. Right. Um, it's really not focusing too much on the gear, but on, on, on pushing your limit with what would you, would you have, you know, you know, get as good as you can. And once you feel limited by your equipment, then you can move on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's such a good point. And you feel like, and, and what has that to do with creativity? Like, how do you connect that? Uh, uh, how do I connect with creativity? Yeah. Or what? How do you, how do you connect that idea? Um, with I don't know. I sometimes I have a feeling that I want to sell everything. 
mm-hmm. and sometimes I have the feeling I want to shoot uh, all the day. I don't know. It depends on uh, how you feel, and uh, mm-hmm. if you are good, you, you are you have many good ideas. Okay, okay. But if you are a little worry about about everything, what will you do? How you mm-hmm. will earn money? Then you cannot think about nothing else, and your creativity is down. Okay. So do you do you like? You reckon it's it's a matter of how free you are to express or or to to do whatever you want, uh, where you know not yeah. you're not bound to certain rules, you're not bound to certain client, to certain budget. That all those things limit yeah. your process, your, cre- your creative process. Yeah. No. So, uh, for example, uh, when you or when I make money with weddings, mm-hmm. uh, I compensate it with uh, my personal project, like these faces or sensual beauty. Mm-hmm. When you have a kind another type of photography. And you have to think different because on the wedding you are doing like reportage and sometimes fashion when you're doing these portraits yeah. outside. And uh, in studio you have to think about light, about the wind in the hair, mm-hmm. about the makeup, about the posing. And it's uh, it's like creativity that you have to uh, create your own photo, your own style. And mm-hmm. on the wedding, you are doing like uh, like everyday job. Yeah, yeah. You have to please the client. Yeah. So, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. I like it. Um, I, I, I like for it. example, I I have other uh, project where I'm going uh, for the gypsies. I don't know mm-hmm. if you saw the pictures. I, yes. And this is totally different style because. You have to be very kind, very careful, mm-hmm. because uh, they don't like when they are shooting, mm-hmm. and um, it's totally different. Because you you have to think uh, about light. You cannot uh, move the people like, uh, hey, stay yeah. here because of the light. You you have to think totally different about everything. Mm-hmm. You have to watch your step where you step because. There is too much mess everywhere. Mm-hmm. Sometimes dogs everywhere. So it's it's like mm, kind of war photographer, but in the very light version. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Fair enough. You you're used to a very controlled um, environment in the studio, um, but when you're out there um, doing more like documentary photography, um, yeah. It's you who needs to move and find the right spot, right? But I feel like that's such a different world. It's like yeah. completely different. Like I've done studio as well, mainly. And then when you go outside, it's like, oh, wow. It's so much harder. I find it so much more difficult to do that. Yeah. And I ah. always wanted to, to try the street photography. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, I like uh, Robin Schimko from Germany. I don't know if you know him. I do actually know. He's do, doing street and he is going and the, shooting people like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, like up close. Oh, no. One so, so meter brave. from. Yeah, and this is, yeah, and this is impossible. There you go. <laughs> okay 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 the connection went up there yeah something catch us <laughs> Maybe my, my wife uh... what did she do tell me the truth <laughs> <laughs> nothing to, i was only to, telling about the, to plug guy. the cable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no more internet today <laughs> all right so you, you were saying about the, this Robin from Germany, how he yes. is uh, taking pictures, that he is not aggressive, but these pictures are very uh, nice because they are like in, uh, when you are watching it, them, it looks like you are in the street and see what he sees. 
Yeah, in their face, right in front of them. But yes. that's, that's so so brave. Like I, yeah. I could I could not do that at all. Yeah, and I'm doing the gypsy pictures like this because mm-hmm. uh, then you have feeling that you are in inside this uh, village and mm-hmm. next to the people. Yeah, close up. There's. Uh, There's this very famous American photographer that does the same thing. That gets like really up close. But I don't remember his name right now. Gil oh. Gildane. No, uh, Bruce Gilden. Bruce Gilden. Yeah, Bruce yes, Gilden. Up, Bruce yes. Gilden. Exactly. He's super crazy. I was like, oh, shit. but he's a big dude. He's a he's very very tall and big. It's like okay, because <laughs> if you're small, you can't do that. Because he gets like yeah. Talking off all the time, people like you know shout at him. It's like, oh, get off me! You know, it's like very aggressive. But he's he's like totally cool with it. He's like, oh yeah, I don't care. Like, that's fine. It's like, yes. oh shit! Oh, shit. I, I, I have also book from him. Yeah, great, great photographer. I mean, he, there's a documentary about him that I could recommend anyone watch. And that's where you where, where you see him do do his work on the street. And you see him go up close and he has like one camera in one hand and the flash in the other. And he goes like up close with the flash and just, oh, okay. The poor lady is like just walking on the street and getting attacked of this guy. Um, it's painful to watch, but it's, it's so much fun at the same time. Um, no, but I love, I love your take, um, like uh, your take on creativity, you know, and, How it impacts and what's your understanding of it? As um, you know, everyone's view on it is very different. So, um, and that's kind of what this this show is all about. You know, um, it's it's spreading the word that creativity is in all of us, um, but at the same time, we see it in, in in very different things, and it's it doesn't mean the same for for no one. You know, for neither of us. Um, So I love and love to hear about that. Okay, great. We have talked about all these different topics, you know, about um, you know your your upbringings and how you and uh, how you um, managed to go into photography and grow into that. Your trip to South America, how that has shaped you and has taught you so much. Um, your commitment with all the different organizations. Um, And all the different titles you you've achieved in, at such a young age, um, all these different organizations and all these different contests you have worked with as a judge, all these different awards you have won, um, all the and all the information and the valuable you know advice you you managed to give us today. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, before um, we come to an end, I would love to ask you if there's anything we haven't talked about that you would love to touch on that I've made, I may have missed or you would love to share with us. I don't know. We go through many topics, so I don't know what your listeners want to hear about. <laughs> no, but I think, I think, I think they, they will be happy because um, I have many friends that, you know, are interested in, um, you know, participating in this contest and it's such a, mysterious world for someone that's starting out like for me and it, well now it is less but um, um until recently for me it was like oh, i don't i really don't know much about it i, I don't know who organizes it or who are the judges how do they get in there how do they judge all this work um and what what matters in a good image and what doesn't and um i think now it's a little bit more clear thanks to you Um, before we end, uh, I would love you to share with our listeners um, where they can find you. To, if they happen to want to reach out to you, they maybe want to book, you know, a, a spot in your workshops. Uh, if they, you know, want to check out your work, you know, so feel free to share with us on your social media. Um, the most active social media is Instagram for me. Uh, and uh, sometimes I put something on Facebook, but it's very rarely because yeah. nobody goes there. That's true. Nowadays. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. And 
I promise you, I will upgrade my website. Okay, good. One good. day. <laughs> I'll have your word on it. It's on tape. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but when your listeners want to ask something, they can roll me on Instagram. Or no problem. I will okay. answer everybody. Three. Uh, where, where can people actually apply to your, um, to your workshops? Where do you do that? Uh, I share the links uh, on my Instagram. Yeah, when okay. The new, new dates will come. So oh, nice. if they are following me, they will see it. No problem. Okay, sweet. Under Martin Kristinek, everything will be linked up on all posts. Also on the podcast episode, you will find the link to his Instagram so you can find it easily. So no problem there. Um, thank you so much for being here with us, for sharing your valuable time um, and all this great information that hopefully helps, you know, the younger generation of photographers to, uh, you know, have to succeed in life and to do what they love most. And so, yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks for being on the show. Um, You're this, welcome. This is coming to an end. This was Martin. I'm Lucas. And this was the Creative Cast. my